How you doing? I'm Kiffany Fennell with Presidential Style, introducing Stepping Up. Alright everybody, I want to welcome y'all tonight. I have the beautiful, the lovely Miss Katrina Jenkins, the hustler of the year. Yes, this is me. This is the owner of G&K's. Just want to go ahead and welcome you here tonight. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for making me a part of President <laughs> Style. Okay. Well, Miss Katrina, I know that you are a icon in Wilmington. And not just because of your beautiful face, but also because you really do have a grind that a lot of people do admire. So tell us a little bit about what do you do and how did you get started? Okay, well, like she said, I am my name is Katrina. I'm 42 years old and I've been doing hair for 23 years. Um, I've actually been licensed for 23 years and it's always been a passion of mine to do hair. And, you know, I've been doing hair in my city um, almost because of those years. I moved away and did hair in New York for like two years and I was eager to get back home to do hair. So I opened up my first salon on Red Cross Street and it lasted for like six years and my aunt took sick and I went and moved in at her shop, which is called Glamour Barber Shop on Castle Street. I stayed there for years and then she just got feeling better and I moved out and moved into my other shop, which is called G and K's on 925 South Third Street. Mm -hmm. Then once I moved there, uh, it used to be like a lot of people in the shop and I was like, man, this space getting too small. Mm -hmm. And so one day I just had a dream of like opening up my own salon downtown Wilmington. Mm -hmm. And you know, you always have the naysayers to tell you that, you know, you're not gonna be able to make it down there. It's very expensive. You know, it's not the area for that. And so I used to ride around. I used to tell my mom and my dad, um, this is gonna be my salon. I seen the building and I was like, mom, this is what I want. This is the salon I want. And it was crazy how I just seen the building and the building was available, but I didn't know how to get in touch with the landlord. I didn't have money. I knew my mom and dad wasn't going for it, but I did have that one small thing and that was faith. Amen, yes, that's good. I mean, Katrina, to tell you the truth, I really am honored to sit here beside you because I know, like you said, just from the small things that you just said, as far as from going from Third Street to, I mean, downtown, like that's a big deal for anybody that's watching this that's not from Wilmington. Wilmington is very small and to be downtown Wilmington is like, it sets the tone for just bigger and better. Like your vision has to be really big because that's a that's a big thing in Wilmington to be downtown. That's like prime real estate. So that's... And it's, it's really crazy because up. when I went there and I met the landlord, um, the landlord, I told him, this is my shop, this is what I want. Um, I tried to get my mom and my dad to go. My mom, during this time, my mom was still living because my mom passed not too long ago after I moved in. And um, I tried to get my mom and my dad to go look at the building. I told mom, anything I used to tell my mom to do, she could make my dad do it. And so at this time, my mom couldn't make my dad do it. So then my mom was, my mom actually ended up showing up downtown when I went to go look at the building. The day I walked in the building, I knew it was my building. I was like, God, I know this is the building for me. It was like, there's three levels. I was like, we do nails, we do hair, we could cut hair. You see it in the city. You see it in Charlotte, you see it in Raleigh, God, this is it. Amen. And then I was able to get the salon with no money down. I went into the salon with $50 to my name. Hey, what? I, have, I didn't have good credit. I had $50. I didn't have no money. I didn't know what I was about to do. I had just paid the other shop rent, and I knew it was my shop. So I went there with $50. I walked in the door, and when I went, met with the landlord, he was kind of skeptical at first about renting to me. And um, I don't know why, but he was. And then he was like, he called me back. He said, I want you to meet with my business advisor. And I was like, a business advisor? I was like, all right, I'm down with it. So I met, him with, met with his business advisor, and the business advisor fell in love with me just with my conversation. He was like, you could get the building. I was like, okay, so how much money I got to put down? And I ain't tell him all my personal business. I went in there looking like a million dollars, dressed up from head to toe like I had money. Name and I have claim a, it, honey. Like I have a fifty dollars. Yes. And then he ended up telling me I could move in with no money down. And he said, actually, I'll give you a month free. So I moved in with no money down, a month free, and I've been there. June would be June coming up would be four years. Now. Hey, Amen. Now. I hate to stop you on that one, but I do want y'all to understand what the message of this story is. Okay, she just said that she had a dream and a vision, and she went and she said, this is going to be mine, and when she went there, she had the mentality of, let me speak as if this is 
mine. So do you hear that? I want everybody to hear that because a lot of times that people look at you and they know the shine, they know the glory, they, they, but they don't know that story. So I do want people to take that into consideration because to me, it's big for people to hear how you started from the bottom and you hit them, right? I mean, first of all, everybody has been to a Katrina Jenkins event. I know I have always love her events and I just want y'all to understand that that's a big deal for her to say that she came in with $50 in there and she said this is mine and it became hers because of that faith so keep that in mind like faith is huge so just want to go into what's next what's what's coming well even when um i have hair shows people don't know i have hair shows i don't have any sponsors like that i don't have money like that and when you put on those events you're talking about like 20 and 30 and 40 and 50 thousand dollars mm -hmm. i step out on faith when i have those shows I, my mom is no longer here my mom has in um march will be two years my mom passed so anything i told my mom to do and i have to come to them with a vision and a plan they'll back me the whole time so i used to do a hair show i did seven years of, i did seven years of hair shows and i mean i think it was very successful to be from a small town but uh, um i just don't know if i'm gonna do it this year or not because sometimes when you live in a city like this people get burnt out with different things that you have that's always repeated mm -hmm. so i'm still praying and wait for god to answer my prayer on whether i should continue to do the show or not <laughs> please i want to say this so y'all can hear it please do it because even though you feel like you're like you just tired from it we need it we need we need you the city needs you it may not seem as it but we need you because when people get on that stage and they become a whole nother person you don't know what you breed in life to because it's a lot of girls that want to be models i mean people come to me and they're like mira i want to i want to model i want to do this but you give people a platform to do what they don't normally do and if we cut off that i mean what i mean what is it to do i mean like the girls say another no check no but but anyways what is it to do like it's really nothing else going on in Wilmington, so we need that like Katrina, if there's anything that I would say is we love your hustle. And I know it's not easy because at the end of the day, like you say, you don't have everybody back you up. But people think that you do. Like, people think you got an army behind you. And if you look good, you make it look good, honey. I do have an army when you use, but you got to pay from a big family. Yeah. And so people don't know that my biggest fans are my sisters. I have six sisters, I have a twin sister, and I have a brother. Mm -hmm. And my mom and dad was married for 55 years and all we ever known was each other. Mm -hmm. So to my sisters, I'm like a celebrity to them, I'm like a star to them. So they always support me in anything I do. Like that whole show is ran strictly from my sisters. My sisters is everybody's in the background. But when you in this industry that we're in, you know, you can't have nothing but faith. Because if you lose faith, you don't have anything else. Because you have people that you think your friends, that are not your friends. You think people that have your back, that don't have your back, that wet. You know how many people that prey on your downfall, so you have another choice but to stay prayed up. Mm. And my life didn't change until my mom died. Because once my mom died, that was everything. So once my mom died, I didn't know where the resources were coming from. I didn't have no ideas where I was going, where I was headed. And I heard a small voice whisper to me and say, you going to make it. Because I didn't think I would make it. I didn't think I would have to shop anymore. I didn't think I would do anything. And I heard this small voice that spoke to me and said, you can do all things through Christ that gives you strength. So I always say that scripture over and over and over again. To anybody that want to become a salon owner, you can do it. Amen. Anybody that want to become, uh, have their own hairline, you can do it. Amen. So anything we put our mind and our heart to, and I always tell everybody, if you pray and ask God, for it, because you write that vision now. He tell us to write the vision now. You Nehemiah, make it plain. Nehemiah. <laughs> you make it plain. And when you do it, God shows up and show out. He might not come when I want him, but I promise you, he always hey, on time. Hey, honey, she is witnessing <laughs> to me. That is what, I get it. Yeah. See, that's what I'm talking about. That's why I love this woman, because I've, I've met Katrina like a while ago, and she's always been this way. Like, I feel like you've always been, you just create just such an aura and you demand respect from just your presence. And people don't understand that you didn't do this just overnight. Like, it took a grind. And I really respect that. I really, really do. And I appreciate the fact that you share the things that, that God has actually done. And you give glory to God. And that's what I'm talking about because that's a big deal. Another thing I want to do is you have a hair woman. Is this your hair? Obviously. Yes. Of course. Yes, honey. Yes. Give me life. Yes, it is. What is the name of your hairline? It's AKA Human Hairline. Okay. And a lot of people think it's just.
just mine, but it's actually not really just mine. It's actually my niece, her name is Alicia. Okay. And she has a best friend named Alicia, so that's where the AKA come from. So it's Alicia, Katrina, and Alicia. Okay. And actually, the hairline wasn't really one. It was my idea, but my niece is a hustler as well. And so when we all brought it to the table, I was like, well, let's just try it out. We go to the store, we always buy our hair. And even with the hair game, I still don't have the right hair because you, uh, even with doing hair, you gotta research and research and research. And then I've been praying right now and asking God to send me the right vendors. Mm -hmm. Cause you know, when you buy hair from a store, you mm -hmm. don't never go and complain. You have to just put that hair in, you have to work it. But when people buy hair from you, you always hear a lot of, you know, naysayers, naysayers. So I've been praying and asking God to direct me into finding the actually right hair vendor to buy hair from. I mean, if that's me taking a trip to China, if that's me taking a trip, a trip to India, whatever it is, I know God will see fit to make it work. So right now with the hairline, we still tweaking it, we still order some hair, we still get rid of some hair, we still working it out. So um, we be using 7, 8 hair right now, and I have, I'm using like three different vendors right now, we still trying to fill our way and figure it out, and all that came from money out of our pocket. Like, we just up, just put money aside and make it work. And that's how, you know, we're trying to make it work with the hairline as well. Exactly. I'm, I love how humble you are. You said my niece is a hustler too. Let me shout her out. Miss Alicia Jenkins, yes, you are a hustler. Miss Perfect Couture and Miss Hood, yes. Isn't that the line? Mm -hmm. Hood, yeah. yeah. That's what's up. Tell, her, tell us what's the um, abbreviation for. Well, I don't know what her abbreviation for hood is, but what it is is that her perfect couture line is everything she makes, she make it handmade at the sewing machine. Um, she didn't know how to sew. She knew nothing about sewing. And my sister actually knows how to sew. So she asked my sister to come over, and next thing you know, she picked up a talent of sewing, and everything she sews, she sews from her heart. Yeah, and that's what, I mean, a lot of people think that, a lot of people say she acts just like me because she has a hustle. But believe it or not, my whole entire family if you know us, we all do the same thing. We just try to hustle and grind with anything that we try to put our hands on. I got the hustler spirit, period. So, yes, I, now I love it. So, we're going to need Alicia to come back on the show so she can come and tell us exactly what hood means. Because I believe it's like honoring our destiny or something. I don't know. But come back on here and you can tell us exactly what it means. So, as far as where can we find you? How can we get in touch with you? Um, actually, you can find me on Facebook with, at Jean K's Hair Studios. We are located at um, 230 Princess Street, and it's right downtown, right, right across from the New Dunkin' Donuts. Everybody knows the New Dunkin' Donuts because they just opened up downtown. And I have a, a fabulous team of stylists that, you know, when I can't do people, because I want to start traveling and doing hair again. Um, that's one thing I love about the president of the Presidential Style Magazine, because if we could get some talent like we have in Wilmington and start traveling and let people see our ability and our work ethic. And so I really want to try to get a team of people that start traveling to Charlotte and Raleigh to do hair. And that's one of my 2016 goals is to get back into traveling and doing hair um, at two different salon locations. Have you ever did um, Brother Brothers? Um, I go to all the Brother Brothers shows, but I never like competed in anything in these shows. I just go and learn classes. I do all the classes to try to learn more. Because I think a lot of times with us as stylists, we get we get content. We be content with where we at. And to me, I'm 42 years old, and I still am hungry for the success if I was 23 years ago. Like I want it. I want it, and I want it bad. And I, I can taste it. Like I never could taste nothing like I taste hair. Like I live here, I breathe here, I taste hair. So I want to be better, and I'm, I'm easy to learn. I'm more hands on. I want to learn. I want to be good at what I'm at. And a lot of people don't understand. Like you always at the shop, you always here, and I just want to be the best at anything I put my hands on. Mm -hmm. What advice? I mean, you just kind of gave us a little bit of advice. But what advice would you give to a girl right now where you are, who is trying to figure out what she needs to do in order to get into the hair business? Would you tell her to go to school? What would you say to her? Well, actually, I try to tell everybody. They came out with natural hair care license, which I think is a, a good thing, but I also think it's a bad thing because when you go to school, you get the theory of it. Mm -hmm. You learn what that scalp do. You learn what that hair do. You learn exactly what takes place when you go to school. So if a young girl come to me right now and say, I want to be a hairstylist, people don't believe it. But if you be a hairstylist, hairstylists make good money. Mm -hmm. You know, you make good money, especially if you put your heart in it. If you put your heart into what you're doing, you have no choice but take it to the top. So I think everybody should follow through with their dreams. 
go to school, my daughter do hair as well. She don't have a, just a hungry success like I do because I think that she feel like I want her to be like me and push her to do it, but my daughter do hair very well. But I told her she gotta want it for herself. Mm -hmm. So that's a success that you gotta want for yourself because hair is something that God gives us that talent. People don't believe it, but hair don't come to you unless God give you that talent. God says your gifts will make room for you in front of, and put you in a place in front of great men. So and that's true. I, and I, I believe that. Yeah. I really believe that. And I take that same message that you just said. It's crazy you said that scripture. That's one of my old time favorite scriptures because I know if you have a gift, God gonna make room for your gift. Mm. I mean, you might not see it, you might not believe it at that time, but if you put your heart into it, I mean, even like this magazine. I remember when this magazine first started out. You have to keep telling her this magazine going somewhere. Mm -hmm. This magazine is going somewhere. If you put your heart and your mind into it, mm -hmm. people all over the world they say you know gonna start hearing about this magazine. So for everybody that's listening up that don't know about this magazine, we want you to share the post. We want you to share the post. We want you to tell your friend, tell your cousin, tell your brother all about this magazine because she put her heart and her mind into presidential styles. I remember day one when she first had the idea. You have to take your ideas and run with it because you have naysayers that'll tell your dreams down. Yeah, and my father and my mother always taught me to only believe in what the word of God tell me. Not what man tell me. Woo! Man will fail us every time. But God will always be right by our side. Amen. And the money, the money gonna come. I don't know how it happened. But the money always it's gonna put show you up in, in front of great men. Yes, God. And I just want to say another scripture. The scripture that says, do everything as if you're doing it towards the Lord as if you are giving towards the Lord because that will all come back to you and I just love I mean oh my gosh it's just such a you just oh my gosh she killed it I can't even talk and y'all know I love to talk but she just killed it I mean do everything as if you're doing it for the Lord and the reward will come to you it really will and I really love how you said you know believe in yourself keep speaking over things have faith have a vision write it down that's big write down what you want exactly what you want tell God a time you know I ain't gonna say it's gonna happen exactly at that time because when is your time God will say it's your time but you need to write it put you, you don't write it. it you need to write it down like right now it's 2016 they have this thing called a vision board that's going around in big cities we're not doing it here but a lot of big cities doing it where they have a vision parties where you get in the magazine and you are talking to God about your vision you're writing it down on a board you hang it up you already told God this is what I want I want this house I want this car I want this shop I want these shoes you're writing it down and you're making your vision plain as day but a lot of times us as individuals we like to share our vision with other people mm -hmm. so somebody else then stole our vision because we shared it so if we start keeping our visions to between us and God, then when it comes to light, then you ain't got to worry about somebody else stealing your dream because you that dream will see yourself. You better read me, Elijah. Yes. Okay. So, again, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Everything that you said was everything that everybody needed to hear. I don't know if y'all got anything. I got something. And overall, Katrina, please keep doing what you're doing. I mean, I speak life to you. I love you. I love what you do. I love you You as a brand. Please keep doing it. I mean, we need you. The city needs you. If not, give somebody the torch and they'll keep doing it. Yay! Thank you so much. I'm Tamira. And this is Prejudice Style. Stepping up. Y'all have a great night.